Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, I'm joined here with one of my besties, Stephanie, from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening, although I don't think really think she needs an introduction now. But Stephanie, this is a last minute video. We were not planning on filming today. But girl, I have been in like tears this morning. All of our awesome participants in the 30 day challenge created what's called a kudo board, which I had never heard of that before. But a microphone. I do have a new microphone now. I've never seen that before. I'm like, I'm <laughs> trying to be fancy over here. We, ha I have a whole new, I'll get to that. And I have a whole new system coming, which I'll get to that in a minute. But I was just, Stephanie hasn't seen the kudo board yet. I was showing her her bits of it before we started filming. And I, I'm not going to pull it up on the screen because so many people just like shared their hearts out to us. And that's, that vulnerability is, is a private thing. But I, you guys, I have been in tears. It's a really good thing. I mean, I cry easily anyway. I'm a Scorpio moon, whatever, but I've literally been in tears reading these notes that you guys left for us. And I'm just going to have a moment of rawness and realness. And Stephanie can vouch for you guys. I think we do a pretty good job of putting ourselves together and coming on screen and doing our videos. But there are times, deep, dark times that we all experience and we want to throw the towel in. And reading those notes from you guys meant so much to me this morning. I'm going to print it out and keep it because I know you guys think that we're helping you, but you're actually helping us. I agree. 100%. It's, an, it's an exchange of energy and I'm, I'm getting emotional. Um, I mean, this morning I, I had struggled through my practice this morning because I mean, Stephanie's seen me in tears. Stephanie has seen me on my knees. I struggled this morning, you know, going through my, my practice. And, um, and so I, I just, you guys mean the world to us and worlds, words cannot express how grateful i think i can speak for both of us when we say we are so grateful to you guys and this is what ram das meant when he said we're all just walking each other home we all have something to contribute mm -hmm. and if we all contributed the same thing we wouldn't get anywhere you know, and so I am, I'm just so grateful that that I'm, I'm literally, I've never heard of a kudo board. I just realized I can print it out. So I'm going to go after we're done filming, I'm going to go print it off of my computer and I'm going to keep it in, on my bedside table just to be able to read your sweet notes. Um, it, it actually, one of the notes said that, that they now even know our theme songs and they, you know, when the theme songs come on and, you know, that was the part of my, my journey is on this channel was always trying to support and promote other people as well. You know, it doesn't cost me anything to have a YouTube channel. Anybody can open up a YouTube channel and the opportunities that I've been given on this platform to have a public platform. I want to share that. And my friend, Josh, my actual in real life friend, um, does the opening song on my channel. And so that made my heart happy when I when I hear that people are like dancing to my opening song because I'm sure that would make Josh really happy as well, you know, yeah. dancing to it. Um, although I don't know how often Josh is actually on YouTube because he's a very busy man. He's he was in the the band Deer Hunter, so he's uh always working and creating new music and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but I know that he would be very very happy happy to hear that so many people are finding joys, joy, even in our opening songs, you know, and that's, that's what, that's what we're supposed to do. And some of the topics that we cover are, are really heavy, but I think we do bring humor to it. And uh, humor is the highest level of spirituality. Ace and of Cops. Ace of Cops, yes. <laughs> so, you know, and so I just want to thank you guys so, so, so much. Sal, I think Sal is the one that put it together originally. And I know you've told me personally and you put in the letter, um, Sal, how I've I've helped you embrace your Indian heritage. And girl, the Indian heritage, like Stephanie, I've told you so many stories about India. It that is one of the coolest group of people in the world. I love the Indian. I, my favorite show on TV right now is a reality show called Family Karma, and it follows a group of first generation Americans from India in Miami. But their parents are my favorite, the aunties and the uncles, because they're so funny. 
And I just, I watch it. It makes me homesick for India and India is not even my home, but it makes me homesick for India. And so um, I love the Indian culture. If you are of Indian heritage, right on. Like I, I spend a lot of money to go there and study. So, you know, you're from a very, all, all cultures are beautiful, right? All cultures have beautiful beauty and, and, and um, spiritual value. Um, but the Indian culture is definitely one that's near and dear to my, my heart. And I miss it. And I can't wait to go back. My dog is from India. I think we're going to start putting a bindi on him every morning because it seems appropriate. Um, and so anyway, so today we were going to kind of just do a little um, checkup for the month of December. And also maybe pull some cards on Atlantis. Because I feel like maybe this can be one of the questions which we'll get to later on. Because first I want to check in with the month of December, but I kind of feel like the Tartaria, the Atlantis, they're all connected. This is going to be the nail in the coffin, I think. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah, 100%. And, and that's what I keep saying for like the Christian people. It's like, everybody seems to be so excited that we're at the apocalypse. No, apocalypse already happened. That's good news. Yeah. Already happened. The fall of Atlantis. And as we know from the law of one, and the Cassiopeians, that all of us that are here today, we were there for the fall of Atlantis. So we got a round trip ticket back um, to be here now. And we're going to win this time. Yeah. So, I second. Is there anything you want to add, Stephanie, before we get into the tarot cards? Um, I want to say, uh, I want to shout out to all the people who wrote on the, um, what is it called? A kudo board. board yeah. Um, I just realized it was sent to me, so I did not realize I have to go through and read it. Um, but Sal, thank you so much. Um, thank you for everybody for contributing your kind words. I'm going to go ahead and read it afterward. Um, I also want to shout out to those who I've done readings with. I, let me tell you, we have probably the best subscribers aka extended family um i have gotten to meet some really truly amazing people through this um time of shadow work and uh the people who have booked with me on the shadow work readings um not only have they supported my business and allowed me to sorry for the noise outside they're doing yard work next door of course when i'm in the house um can you hear that? Not really. I mean, I've got them building a freaking high rise okay. next to me, so that's that's fine. Um, but not only have they supported my business, um, but that those readings have brought me absolute great joy. There are just some people I read for, and I know I don't even want the reading to end. I could just talk to certain people for hours, and I really have connected with some really amazing people. So shout out to those people. I still have plenty of readings to go. Um, to get through in the next couple of weeks through December who have booked with me. And I can't wait to meet those people. Um, in addition to that, you know, if you are looking for a shadow work reading, I still have some openings left for December. Um, and then starting in January, you would have to sign up on my, on my website. But um, I just want to say thank you for supporting our channels and supporting what we do because we can't do it without you guys. Yeah, we'd just be talking to ourselves if it wasn't for you guys, you know. I'm still shocked that it's not just my mom that watches my channel. I, I, I thought it was just going to be my mom that watched for a while. So, um, you know, and and, uh, and the universe works, you know, works in such mysterious and magical ways. I was going to share with you guys, yes, I have a new microphone. I'm about to get a new system. As everybody knows, both Stephanie and I, as, as far as, and, and a lot of the other of our friends who, who sponsored this shadow work challenge, we are under heavy shadow banning, like heavy shadow banning. And of course, that does affect the AdSense for someone like me who has maintained monetization. It does, but my AdSense is also gone because of some theft. And so I have not been in a great financial position for the last couple of months i'll be very honest like it's been stressful and um i my computer is very old and by the grace of god it has been hanging on 
But the other day I was sitting there and I was like, I really need a new computer to keep doing this. And I just kind of set it up out into the, the universe. Like if I, if I'm going to keep doing this, I need a new computer because this is going to, it's going to die. The very next day, I kid you not, the very next day, one of our students at Ashtanga Yoga Atlanta said that her brother who works in the music industry, so therefore has a lot of storage space on his desktop, not even a laptop, a huge desktop, was going to give away his new computer because his company was getting him another computer. Does anybody want it? So I have a brand spanking new computer with tons of storage space that is in transit to me right now. That's awesome. That's how God works, you guys. So no matter how many times the darkness kicks us and knocks us and thinks that the darkness is one, the light will always win. God is always conspiring to help and assist us. But we have to ask for help. Asking you shall receive. It's one of the quotes in the Bible I actually still believe in. And uh, that, that's a lesson I've had to learn, too, lately. Yeah. Well, the funny thing was, is I literally like people have laughed and joked with me that I must have some guardian angel watching my computer because it's amazing. It's still running. It's and old. It's old. It's and, and it was never <laughs> this, this laptop. I think I got it in like 2016. I, when I got this laptop doing, having a YouTube channel was nowhere in my line of consciousness or thought. At that point, I was traveling back and forth to India. I was a Mysore teacher. I wasn't going to be on the, on. The, I didn't even watch YouTubes at that point. I was so, you know, so I just got a lap. My, my 2016 purchase of this laptop was literally just to do basic stuff for my business, for the Shala. And the fact that I'm still using it now in 2000, almost 23, and it's still running, It's it's been a miracle. But yeah, the other day I just, um, I just put up, I was like, I need a new computer. I don't know how this is going to happen because I'm not making any money off of my AdSense because it's being derailed. Um, I have an FBI uh, case file open with that right now. Um, I'm not, you know, it's, 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 you know, the only thing I'm, I'm really making my money off of is teaching still. And so just the fact that the very next day, boom, a brand yeah. new speaking laptop desktop, it's in transit right now with, all this space available for video making. And, you know, so I, 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 I kind of took that as a God wink, like keep going, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know, and that's one thing I've said on my channel before. I, I like to study. I must, I love to study. I, I certain stuff. I don't want to study math. Math is boring to me, but uh -huh. there's certain things that I like to study and I will go deep. That's why I think I'm a good philosophy teacher because I will sit there and study that shit. I will study the shit out of it, you know, until I thoroughly understand it. And, but on my channel, I think I've said this many times, I kind of wanted to have a place where I could present what started off as, as information in a storytelling type of narrative, but also learn with you guys. You know, every time I open up a Sophia book or a Magdalene book, I'm reading it for the very first time live, well, not live, but re recorded on my channel. I'm not, the only, the only works, the only books I prep for are the missing books of the gospel or the, of the Bible, because I want to know where they were found, how they were found, how many people have treated. That's the stuff I need to know. So I make better decisions on my opinions over the information that I have available. But with this other work, I'm literally just presenting it to you guys as I find it. And so we are, we are, we are helping each other. That's why I love when you leave comments about your ideas and your insight. Um, our friend Jan left an awesome comment. Um, I think it was on Aquarius Rising Africa's channel from Monday, which you couldn't make with the Emerald Tablets. Where we were talking about Yashua and Magdalene being married. And in the Magdalene manuscript, she says the wedding that's spoken about in the canonical, the canonical gospels, the wedding in Cana, turning the, in the, well, the canonical gospels are the approved gospels. The well, it was a wedding in Cana. It, it was, it was in Cana. <laughs> Yes, yeah, but but we call the approved gospels canonical or canonical gospels. Oh, never even heard of that. Yeah. So the the canonical or canonical gospels are the approved the sixty six books that were approved. So yeah, in canon, but it was the the the, the wedding we learned about in Sunday school and the canonical gospels where Jesus mm -hmm. does what or Yahshua does what water to wine turns water into wine. Whose wedding was that? 
Magdalene makes it clear it was theirs. It was Yashua yes. and Magdalene's wedding. And Jan made a really good point because who's the person that told Yashua that they were out of wine? I think it was his mother. Mm -hmm. It was his mother. So why, if they were just guests at a wedding, why would his mother care if they were out of wine? The story goes, the narrative story goes, it was her good friend's son's wedding or daughter's wedding. Maybe it was the daughter. I don't remember. But um, they were worried to lose their status or be um, deemed, I don't know. <sighs> Apparently during that period of time, if you ran out of wine at a wedding, it ruined your reputation. I mean, it's the same in the South. And that's what Jan pointed out, which I think is brilliant. Because, yeah, when my sister got married, there was an open bar. That's very important that there's an open bar. So, of course, the mother of the groom was running around going, oh, shit, we're out of alcohol. But, you know, it's so fascinating, too, what we're learning. The fact that Yashua could turn water into wine. We can do that, too. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to do that as well. That's what he was speaking. So the canonical, canonical gospels tell us one story. But the other gospels, which there are way more of, tell a different story that makes way more sense. And 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 going on this journey and, and, un, and unraveling all these deceptions, you know, it's like uh, when you have a sweater and you pick at that one thread and you pull it and everything falls apart, right? Everything falls apart. That's what's happening. And I know that that's very scary for a lot of people, but I find it very exciting because the truth makes way more sense. The truth is way more loving. The truth is way more compassionate. Less yeah. scary. <laughs> Less scary. Yeah. It just makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And I'll yeah. say again, as I'll say too, for the people who are still frantic about this, that, um, you know, we talked a lot about Thoth saying, you know, the, the Emerald Tablets, he, he never called himself a god. He only called himself the son of Atlantis. And, um, and I said the same thing about Yahshua. Yahshua never called himself a god. It was it was Constantine that made him a god. And someone said, no, in this verse in the Bible, it's he says. And I'm like, you can't use the Bible, the canonized Bible, the canonical Bible. Done by the royal family. Do what? Done by the royal family. Yeah. You can't use that as a research tool because it is absolutely factually, not just opinion based, but factually inaccurate. And if you study all of these ecclesiastical councils, starting with the Council of Nicaea, there's been many of them. If you can study all of their, what happened, they have brought in correctors. They brought in editors to edit the stories to serve the political purposes of the cabal, of the controllers. No, Yahshua never called himself a god. Never. So you've got four Gospels, four canonized Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But you got like hundreds of other Gospels over here. These hundreds of other Gospels over here that were banned all say the exact same thing. But these four Gospels say one thing that's different from these. Which one of the two? And we know these over here, these four have been, have gone through editing processes where these yeah. over here have not. You know, if you read if you read the Emerald Tablet, Tablets and you read the Egyptian Book of the Dead, I know there's a Tibetan Book of the Dead. I haven't read it yet, but, you know, I've been slowly going through Egyptian Book of the Dead. It's literally the Bible, but like the Bible was it's like taken from it. And then it was like twisted a little bit, just just enough. Um, and, and it makes me kind of wonder, and I kind of want to pull cards um, after on it. There was a, I know Kanye West is going all batshit crazy. He's playing like both sides right now. Um, but there was a meme that, or a sign he was holding with a picture of him. And it said something about how the Roth, or the, I'm sorry, the, the Freemasons, um, actually, I might be able to pull up the picture if you allow me to um, share screen here, because I want. I think this is important. I think we really need to look into this. So give me a sec. I'm just going to look it up. 
Absolutely. I know which one you're referring to. And with uh, Mr. West, I'll be, I'll just say Mr. West. I do think what we're seeing is somebody who has been massively abused mentally and we're seeing those cracks. And so I would not want to, I mean, I have a lot of compassion for those, those people. Of course, with his ex-wife's uh, Balenciago connections. Mm hmm. That's interesting. So I'll say about that is that's interesting. We'll leave it there. Okay, so you're gonna let me even look this up. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it. And so he's basically saying when people know the truth about Atlantis or where the real Egypt is, right? Well, actually, you know what? I might have it on my phone and I can just read it. Be oh, um, I just got a notification. Christy Alley just passed away. Yeah. All these. I thought she was, was a uh, good one. That's what I thought, too. But who, who, who the hell knows? I mean, she's connected to Scientology for sure. Which Scientology, you know. I'm not okay. I found it. Hold on. I have it. I saved it in my pictures on my phone. So I'll just hold it up for a second. You can see that's Kanye. And this says the Freemasons uh, came up with the whole fake Egypt and Egyptians in Cairo to hide the real Atlantis and Atlantis here in the Americas that inspired their copy. So let's ask, let's ask again, because we've seen the maps that are associated with Tartaria, where where I live. And it's not just Georgia. It's Florida. It's Georgia. It's all the way up to Washington, D.C., and all the way over to, like, Texas is Egypt. Mm -hmm. So can we ask the cards point blank, Stephanie? Just, just is the southeastern part of the United States, the deep south, including Florida, even though Florida is not North Florida is considered part of the deep South, but South Florida is not, but we're going to include the whole state of Florida. Is that part, is that Egypt or the land, land of Kim as, as Thoth calls it, the land of Kim. It's most certainly Atlantis, most certainly. And I'm going to explain why in a second here, which I think Atlantis was a huge part of the world, but specifically I think Kim was like the, what we would call the um almost kind of like the capital so this was the cat yeah that's well that's what i kind of assumed because the city of atlanta where i live you guys this is not the original name of this city the original name was marthasville and then they turned they changed the name to atlanta well we know we know that they have to tell us the truth in some way so why did they change it why atlanta why? Out of all the names they could have picked, why Atlanta? Well, Queen of Coins would tell me perhaps that it is Egypt. Um, I'm definitely getting an, an Atlantis feeling because this Palace of Cups, so I'm using a deck that I don't use that often. It's called the Tarot of Dreams. It has five bonus cards in it, and Palace cards are one of them. Now, Palace of uh, Cups card is all about... Um, a land by the ocean. It's about real estate, the palace cards. So it's actually talking about this particular card is actually talking about a place that has to do with water because cups are water. If you can look at the, that was going to be my next question that we'll get to Thank about you. the water. Um, it definitely is a land of high vibration. We have the lovers with a four of wands card here which it love would be the highest of vibration. So it does hold a magical vibration. Um, and I do feel like whatever it is had, was moved because that's forward movement. So if we're looking at Egypt, that could absolutely be because then they moved it to what Africa. Yeah. So, so let's ask, so let me ask, which speaking of water. So in the return of the divine Sophia, the person named Shasta, who's the teacher here in Atlanta. I, uh, uh, Cindy actually knows where this house is. So hopefully one day we'll get to go there and see this garden where they do these ceremonies. She talks about how there are streams, sacred streams of water 
under the city of Atlanta. Now, with that being say, said, we know that Ponce de Leon, Ponce de Leon, when he went, the story as, as the, narr the narrative goes, as they teach us, he was apparently when he was exploring this area of the world, he was looking for something called the Fountain of Youth, which we know allegedly here in Atlanta, if you're an Atlantean, you would grew up knowing that that was supposedly under Ponce City Market, which is a huge I haven't brought you there yet, Stephanie. I will. They but they went really woke, so I haven't gone there in a long time. But but that it's under Pont City Market now in the Emerald Tablets. Thoth also speaks about these sacred creeks of of water that lie under Egypt. The same way in which Shasta spoke about these creeks of water that lie under Atlanta. So let's, I don't know how to ask the cards this, yes or no. Are they talking about the same? Is Thoth and Shasta, so Thoth, the Egyptian dude, son of Atlanta, and Shasta, the woman from Atlanta, Georgia, are they talking about the same bodies of water that are under Atlanta? Meaning that that would be another evidence, it would be more evidence to prove that Atlanta was part or was the capital of it this this area of the world geographically was the capital of atlantis i got one card that hmm. oh i believe so um so we do have a tower card so like you said like the nail in the coffin kind of a thing Okay, um, I'm kind of getting a yes with the tower card because um, it's going to be like a big deal when it comes out into the open. Um, oh, people are going to crap their pants. I mean, we think about the church, the people in the church realizing they've been worshiping Lucifer this whole time. Can you imagine the academic world when these scholars, these historian, prof his yeah. history professors realize that they were duped? Mm hmm. Um, and I also have the Emperor card, which could be talking about like Thoth himself. Um, I, I think that Thoth wrote about this at a, uh, for this particular time, like you've shared with us um, several times um, to kind of give us the heads up of like opening your mind to investigating. Um, and then I, I do have the uh, Ten of Cups card here which I do feel like uh, stems from a bloodline, perhaps like Magdalene bloodline, perhaps, or something. Um, and then the judgment card would tell me that I feel like something will emerge regarding it with the judgment card. It's almost like, It's like the powers that be have used this fountain of youth for sinister purposes. And that's all going to come to a close because the judgment card is about closing no, of right. cycles. You know what I mean? Um, but the tower card kind of is like sticking out to me a little bit. Like, are we, well, let's like, spare, are we, are you and I and all the other, the handful, there's a handful of us talking about this. Are we the tower? Because we're putting it out there where we're planting the seeds to people to go research for themselves. Are we the tower card? I'm not trying to, to sound arrogant when I say that because there's a lot of people talking about, there's a few of us talking about this. A lot of people. Yeah, we're not the only ones. We're not the maybe. only ones. But the fact, and maybe it was like Thoth, the spirit of Thoth, like tapping us on the shoulder and saying, I need you to look at this. I need you to reconsider what you, I mean, literally guys, every fucking thing they've told us they've taught us is is not true it's all a lie all of it this is interesting um i would absolutely have to go yes but i'm gonna get one more card here there's a card here that's definitely standing out to me and that's really the page of swords what does the Page of Swords mean? The Page of Swords is about a communication through words and thought. And what are we doing? We're communicating through these videos. We know Billy Carson, who is also communicating this message through his videos. You have other people who are communicating. There's, there's so many different channels that are really talking about this. We're not the only ones. So 
Um, it, it's about um, teaching and communication, um, presenting an idea to the masses to release them out of a uh, prison. Because that's what this card is. It's, it's releasing them from a prison. And yes, this is releasing yourself from a prison. Um, and also it was divinely inspired by um, people who are doing this. And um, it's making people think that what they were taught with the Five of Swords is not exactly accurate. Because it's with the Five of Swords, it's about putting down one idea and moving on to another idea. So it's really opening your mind to a different truth from what the narrative we were told if that makes any sense at all absolutely because the narrative we were taught is complete bullshit it's a fantasy absolute fantasy would you have any questions you want to ask about atlantis stephanie i want to see i don't know why i'm very interested to see what the heck why the conscious well i can't channel him I want to know why he put that freaking meme out. It's weird. The time, maybe we can ask what the why the timing of it, not channeling him, but why the timing of it? Because I find it peculiar. You just started putting all this shit out. So yeah, the the, the timing of that is interesting. So I'm not, I'm going to make it very clear. I'm not channeling him. I'm asking source creator why the timing of that meme. Yeah. Uh, it, you think, do you think that's appropriate? Yeah, because, well, and it's not, and, and Billy Carson, I mean, listen, I, Billy Carson, if you ever watch my videos, I promise I'm not stalking you. I'm just obsessed with your work. I think if you guys, I will put his channel in the description box, guys. Like, he's incredible. His research is freaking incredible. And um, I always, like, I'll go, do now I'll research something and then I'll go, like, cross check it to see what he got just to make sure I'm on the right path because I trust him. I trust what he's putting out there. And so I have emailed him about potentially coming on the channel. I haven't really heard back, but I know he's a busy dude. Billy Carson, wink, wink, if you're, if you're, if you're watching. I'd love to have you on my channel and talk about your research because... It's going to sound really bizarre. It's astrologically speaking, I think it lines up with, I don't know if it necessarily was him that decided to put out that meme or if he was talked into it. I, I don't really know because I'm not going to channel him. But astrologically speaking, I feel like with a judgment card, with the eight of cups, it's like now is the time to walk away from the old shit, yeah. the old belief system. Um intentions were good because we have the page of cups so that's good intentions because that's like offering something with the vibration of love because cups are emotions and love um, and it's presenting it to the mainstream audience you know the mainstream audience still thinks that there's like a deadly um yeah that thing yeah and we're sitting over here we're way beyond that we're like y'all our whole geography is wrong. And you don't <laughs> even realize that, you know, anyway, so this is, we're talking about leaps and bounds between different awarenesses. And that's all this is. It's, it's, you know, from a very intellectual point, we're looking at our friends watching right now and us, we have a different perception and awareness of the world around us because of what the awakening we've done versus our neighbor. It doesn't make us more valuable as a human being than our neighbor. It's just a different awareness. And so, but Kanye is, he's, he's mainstream, right? So do they drop it with him to get other people to start going, wait a minute, what's he talking about? I don't think he did it himself. No, I'm going to tell you why in a second. I'm looking at a card that I didn't hold up. Before the Eight of Cups, so Eight of Cups is about walking away from something, okay? Like leaving a situation, leaving a place behind, leaving the old behind. Now, I'm going to look at this picture. This Two of Wands is about given an opportunity or the near future, new opportunities, right? You have red and you have blue. It's kind of like the Matrix movie. Are you going to take the red pill or are you going to take the blue pill? Are you going to go back to your hypnotized state within the matrix or are you going to be awakened? So in a sense, it, it, it's, a, it's an awakening tactic. 
for the mass for the masses yeah because they're not gonna you know our friends already think we're freaking batshit crazy stephanie like our mainstream friends like they're not gonna look i know our friends watching i don't have any left except but, maybe but, one. <laughs> yeah but like I, our friends watching don't think we're crazy because they're they're right there with us but like our our friends out in the world that you know in our hometowns that yeah, this was for mainstream people this was yeah. for people who are definitely not awake and like wait what is wait what what are you talking about? Too, was that a wink to us who are looking into this from the White Hats? So was it like, I hate to use the term killing a, a bird with two, or killing two birds with one stone, because don't don't go killing birds. But you know what I mean? Like t getting taking care of two things in one. Like we're going to nudge the masses to look at this and to hear this and start to research this. And we're also going to give like a wink to the people that are already looking into this and already trying to figure it out and already going, Hey, you guys, I don't think our history is correct, nor is our geography. And if it was a wink, it's definitely very well thought out wink. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So I, I do have a justice card. I mean, the justice card kind of would indicate, because when you were looking at the major arcana, that's kind of where you get your yes and your no in the yeah. spread. Um, and it's next to the Knight of Swords. And Knight of Swords is um, for those taking action. I mean, we're kind of taking action on what we have learned. And sure. for so the swords is thoughts and speaking and so we're taking yeah. action with with putting this stuff out there knowing full well that mainstream society will want to put us in a loony bin for us like one floor of the cuckoo's yeah bin. it was kind of a sneaky way of kind of like sliding it in like hey wink wink but i i do feel like it, it's definitely a major red pill for like the the, the masses um but i do feel like it, it's a subtle way of i'm kind of winking too Cool, thank you, because we need that wink, because holy shit, right? Um, now, so uh, I sent you a, um, so speaking of the Magdalene line, so we've, in, you guys, Stephanie and I did a whole breakdown on the Merovingians um, on Aquarius Rising Africa with the O-negative bloodline and how that was the, the original Atlantean bloodline, and that's why Magdalene is so important. And Ma Magdalene's import, for, important for many many reasons but she carried over the atlantean bloodline now my first question is since we know that magdalene herself was very white in the fit she was she, her mother was kentuckian which means can find it from the planet kenteca i'm leading up to this there's there's a point i'm going to ask this is this why there is a massive campaign against white people right now as you said it i started to think <laughs> <laughs> they want us to Before believe and ask the question i kind of knew where you were going with that they want us to believe that magdalene and yashua were jewish so therefore would have been like a browner color which is totally fine like there's nothing wrong with that but they they weren't she was very blonde hair blue eyed ace with of cups ace of cups with a ton of cups so, so it has to be bloodline yeah the bloodline the merovingians because they don't they want people not to trust white people because that's listen i'm gonna i'm just gonna quote mlk on this it's the contact content of character. If we haven't figured that out by now, there are many white people out there that are beautiful human beings, but there are also white people out there that fucking suck. Same with all the other races. Yeah. And what people also don't realize is Yashua was half black. Yeah. So that's another thing people don't realize. They all depicted at the Cesare Borgia, which we've done a few videos on. No, Yashua was half black. Yeah. And if you don't know why, so you're like, well, why would they change? Okay, so you guys. I did a whole video on this. Yes. Well, let me explain why they would pick a um, son of a controller, because Cesare Borgia's dad was one of the popes. Yep, that's right. His dad was a pope. Leonardo da Vinci created the painting. That is Cesare Borgia. And they did not want the Jesus or the Yahshua to look Middle Eastern. Well, they did it, too, because they were already preparing us for Operation uh, Blue Beam. Blue Beam, yeah. They were going to put Cesare up in the sky and call it the second coming in Christ. Yep. And thank you to Sir J Sergei Monast, who was a French-Canadian in the 90s. I covered this a long time ago. In the 90s, he figured this out, and he put it all out there, and then he died of a heart attack. 
Ironically enough. Ironically. And so they had to change at that point. Too many people were aware at that point. So they had to change the tactics with blue beam from Jesus to aliens. So um, just pisses me off. It's like, anyway, anyway. So that's why they have the same replica picture of a Jesus in all the churches from Catholic to Protestant. All, if your grandma or grandpa got a picture of Jesus in their house, I hate to break it to you, but that's Cesare Borgia. That's not Jesus, right? So, um, so yeah, it's to get us. And even in my head, Cesare was a wicked man. Oh, they were all wicked. Listen, oh, he I, was evil. I have done research. Like I want to, I want to, I'm tempted to do a story on Lucrezia Borgia, which was his sister. Lucrezia was like wild. Like her story was fucking wild. All of them. They were, I mean, we're talking like gangster, gangster, and they were the Pope's kids. The Pope had more authority than the monarchs did. They got away with everything. Lucrezia was out there like poisoning people. It's wild, these stories that you hear about the Borgias. And I have gone back and forth. It's such a big deep dive, though, because I can't really focus on one Borgia without talking about all of them because they are a big family. It's like the mafia. I mean, literally, you know, so mafia um, is all linked with the cabal, too. Oh, and mafia runs the, the Vatican. I mean, that's that's uh, yeah, it's all tied together. So so, yeah, it's it's just it's kind of comical, though, now that we can sit back because it's just the real story is just so much better and not what they told us. All right. So. I sent you a picture, and this is coming up in a couple of weeks, guys. I went ahead and pre-recorded some stuff. So I sent you a picture last night, Stephanie, from the Sophia and the Second Coming. Oh, yeah, that was mind-boggling. I'm just going to read a little bit to you guys. The whole episode is coming up in a couple of weeks. I think it's going to be dropped on the 21st, this episode. But I just want to, because now we've established from the cards, like what resonates Unfortunately, there's only so far our research can go because we don't have access to the libraries that the controllers have access to. We, we've established now that the real Egypt is in the, the southeast of the United States with Atlanta potentially being the capital of Atlantis when it existed. We've, we've, we've um, established that there are some, some very powerful sacred streams of water that run under Atlanta. We've also established that Magdalene was very white looking, blonde hair, blue eyed, because her mother was Kentuckian, which was from the planet Kenteca. Not, I'm not saying Kentucky, I'm saying Kenteca, which was a planet. And they got dropped here on this earth too. Okay. So they, that, they're what we call Nordic people. So if you are interested in that, you can follow the Cassiopeian board. They talk about the Nordic heritage. The Kentuckian people brought the Celtic culture, the Druid culture, all that stuff. All right. The good side of it, not the demented bad side, but the good side. So Magdalene herself, even though she was Egyptian, all Egyptians were different races because it was the leftovers from Atlantis, right? So it sounds bad, the leftovers. It was the people that survived the fall. So they're leftovers all leftovers of Thanksgiving is always good. So I mean, good. leftovers I mean, of Atlantis. They knew, I've talked about this before. They knew that different races were not races as we see them. They were just different genetic um highlights of where galactically their ancestors came from okay so they knew that so magdalene wore the, the you will know them by their flags by their coloring right the missing tribes by what they look like that's that's where they're galactically they're from all right so we also have established that the merovingian line the o negative bloodline is what spilled through into tartaria that's why they started the that, the smear campaign on white people and now this is why I'm asking this question. So I'm building up to why I asked this question. I'm going to read you guys an excerpt from Sophia and the Second Coming of the Christ. The Gnostics believed, so the Gnostics were the original Christians. They believed that the soul of Magdalene has remained with us for the last 2,000 years. She continued to work for the redemption of humanity, incarnated again and again. Now, she has told me that she did not, she has not incarnated again since that last life. However, I do believe she has hung around on the earth plane. She's been my guide. She's been many people's guides for the last two. It's not even been 2,000 years, guys. I don't know how long it's been, but it hasn't even been that long. Okay. This is why she is known as she of 10,000 faces and 10,000 names. Um, we must embrace her return for the second coming to occur. The reception of this divine presence in the world is what triggers the wave of the coming Christ. And we're, I'm going to break this down for you guys. What does this mean? 
So this is coming from Mary's own gospel. A disciple at our Magdalene, sorry, sorry, Magdalene, Magdalene's own gospel. A disciple asked Magdalene, when will the second coming occur? Magdalene said it can happen at any time, anywhere, when you least expect it. It is the mystery of the perfect eon known only to the living father, which he will re reveal in the mother in due season. Therefore, be ready and live without regrets so that it when tra transpires, you will be among the living. Now we're going to talk about what she means by this because I don't think she means what people might think she means. The Logos emanated into the world for the redemption of Sophia. If the redemption of Sophia is not received in the world, then the world is not redeemed. Sophia received the Logos, and these who cleave to Sophia have to receive the Logos, and they are redeemed. It is in Sophia that you receive the Logos and is saved. At this time, when Magdalene lived, there was a story about a woman who was overjoyed that Magdalene's teachings were being received. The woman explained, now is the hour of the Holy Bride. But Magdalene answered saying, no. So you see kind of emotional. Before the bride is received, she must be rejected. And therefore, the second coming, and before the second coming, there must come great darkness. Until the second coming of Christ, the wisdom of God will not be received. When the bride is received, know the second coming is near. Now, there's so many things to talk about here, guys. I'm going to break this down for you. I do know that Magdalene herself, who has been in spirit form, guiding us around, is planning on coming back into human form through the birth canal, just like we all do. But she can't come back until the timeline is flipped. So what is she talking about? She's saying that we cannot be redeemed until we understand this, who she was, who the divine, because everything in the macro mirrors the micro, right? Until we, until we receive the divine feminine within ourselves, the Sophia within ourselves, she cannot return. So do you have any thoughts on that, Stephanie, before we go further? I know I sent you that last night. Right, right before bed, I was like, by the way, I just, I just did one of these. I took a screenshot. I was like, right before bed, I was like, FYI, maybe we can pull on this. And you're like, holy fuck. I, yeah, that was my word. Holy fuck. Excuse my French. It's <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of different uh, things going on in those couple of paragraphs. Um, I think a lot of it is uh, symbolic. Mm -hmm. In terms of, you know, uh, you can say, well, it's apocalypse and all this other stuff. But um, I, I think it has a lot to do, you know, not pulling on the cards yet. I think it has a lot to do with those who have believed the narrative of religion and are so stuck in it. Now is the time to make the choice whether you're going to open your mind or not to the actual truth. You will not be along, among the living. She says that very point blank. Yeah, you will not so be living. It, it, it's interesting because religion tries to get you to believe in, in, in their narrative because what it does is those who can't get out of that narrative thinking are going to be stuck either within a 3D realm or go to 4D negative. Yeah, that's just my personal um, opinion on that excerpt right there it's like she's saying now is the time to make a choice and it kind of goes into the law of one where they say and i haven't personally read it but from learning from you when they say you can't stand on both sides of the fence you got to make a choice so yeah. yeah is there going to be a, a splitting off i truly believe so i don't i don't personally think god is going to punish those doing the work no. Well, and this is, this is too. So basically if you take the neutral path where you say, I'm just going to be neutral, you're going negative. The law of one's very clear about that. If you say you're staying neutral, you're going to go negative. You're, you're, you're playing for the bad guys at that point. Um, so basically, yes. So 
And also, though, we know that with the law of one, the fourth density, pe the people who are following a fourth density negative path, the sociopaths, the 90% of the truthers out there that are actively serving Lucifer and lying to your face, but showing you symbolism on their channels of who they really are, because they have to do that. If they can get you to walk away from the good path and serve the dark, that gives them more power in the next round. Okay, so I want to ask the cards first and foremost. We've established this before with that passage with me talking about the white people, all that kind of stuff with the Merovingian line, everything. This is just specifically with Magdalene, not with the Yashua because Yashua was mixed. I'm just talking specifically with the campaign we see going on. Is the second coming of Christ consciousness going to come through the divine feminine awareness? An awakening can we ask the is that what she is that that's one of the things i think she's saying so sorry guys we took a little break to go to the bathroom what was the i, I asked a question i said um what was the last question i asked stephanie before you asked if the second coming of the crisis through the divine feminine consciousness i'm switching my cards to the, a deck that i channel better plus those other cards are about two times the size of my hands so shuffling them is a task. I'm going to use our uh, Odin deck here. And who is Odin? Odin Thoth. Well, it has to do a lot with unity. The marriage, the sacred marriage of the two. Yeah, unity. Um, I'm not necessarily getting any kind of divine feminine cards, but let me just pull one more. Yeah, it's it's more or less there there's a there's a divine union that's to take place to bring in this energy. Um, which and I get unity because the six of cups is is really like family reunion type of energy. Yeah. Kind of getting it's like with anybody who is of the higher dimension souls, you know, the, the wanderers, the ones who decided to come back. Um and it has a lot to do with the fire, which we could look at as conception of the Christ consciousness, meaning bringing in forth the new wave of beings that are the Christ consciousness. If you want to look at it that way, which is the catalyst, the tower. Yeah. And we are too. We are the Christ consciousness as well. And it's that union of like, it's the left and the right nostril, the union of the masculine and feminine within yourself it's, as well. If you look at it this way, if you look at, if you read the book of revelation in the Bible, Many people don't realize this. You have seven seals that are mentioned in the Bible in book of Revelation. Why is it seven? Because those seals are the opening of the Kundalini. It's the chakras. Chakras. The, the earth has chakras too. We have chakras. Every being, like a dog even has chakras. A cat has chakras, okay? It's just the energy spinning, you know, in a specific area of your body. And it carries a specific type of energy. But yeah, it's like the magician card um, next to the devil card. So it's changing the devil's reign in kind of like a slow motion almost. Because Knight of Pentacles is slower. So it's kind of a process. I don't think it's going to happen like boom overnight. Yeah, it's going to take time. I think it's been occurring. I think it's been a slow transition. Um, and I think we are at a very dark hour. And I think we're at the dark hour that Magdalene is talking about. Mm -hmm. I do. But it has a lot to do with the divine union. I really think not necessarily the fe feminine because you still have to have the masculine to balance the feminine. Yeah. And so now is my next question. Are, for lack of a better word then, are the controllers, are the bad guys literally at war against Magdalene? Yeah. This is literally what this is about. Because if you take away the divine feminine, you also wound the divine masculine. The two mm -hmm. cannot exist without the other. We have not, I've said this again, I'll say, I've said it so many times. Even though this book, all these books talk about a patriarchal society, we're not in a patriarchal society. We're in a Luciferian one. You can't have the patriarch without the matriarch. You can't have the matriarch without the patriarch. The two cannot exi exist together.
It's all about the brainwashing of Yashua to take down Magdalene. Wait, so what? they're teaching, they're, okay, let me explain this. This card, the Ten of Swords, is about, like, it's like about a form of surrendering. It's about defeat um, through the Page of Swords. So the Page of Swords would be through, like, your pastors, your priests, your Illuminati, Cabal, whatever, right? Um, and it's segregating. It's making you think that he, Yahshua, was single with that hermit card and not conjoined with his twin, the Queen of Cups. Because we have, that. That's these are twin flames because yep. we have two of the same suit in the tarot. So you have a Queen and King of Cups. So it's making you think that he was not with Magdalene. But it's, he was. It's, it's, it, they're using the form of brainwashing in the church system to destroy the Magdalene. And they're also doing everything they can to, to keep other twin souls away too, aren't they? To, oh, just, yeah. to destroy the feminine. They're using yeah. the masculines to just to try to destroy the. Can we verify that? So in our and also in other relationships of people, are uh, is are the controllers using the masculine through brainwashing? To try to destroy their feminine. This makes a lot of sense because they're trying to get men to be more feminine and women to be more masculine. To to like the same gender. Well, and it, but it's almost too. I mean, we see it, in, and I've seen it in so many situations where they will take the masculine and brainwash the masculine to literally try to destroy the feminine. That's the same soul in them. Ace of Pentacles um, as a yes. Well, it's not going to work with the real Yashua and Magdalene, y'all, because they're already together on the other side. Like, <laughs> and listen, Magdalene's a mighty broad. She can take it. Yeah, I mean, even the person who um, attuned me in Reiki, she was so funny because um, it. Cindy works with her, but she even said to me when I was getting attuned in Reiki, um, Yashua and Magdalene came through um, during my attunements um, along with a couple of the archangels. And she goes, it's, I love working with, well, she called her him Jesus, but she, she said she liked working with them because, um, or no, I'm sorry, it was Mother Mary, which we know her name wasn't really Mary, but Spirit's going to meet you where you are. Yeah. Um, but she was like, yeah, Mother Mary is very, like, the calm, collected one. And then you have, she said, uh, Magdalene is, like, the feisty one. And it's funny because I'm like, that's funny because that's what you say, too. And, and Magdalene yeah. is very feisty. You know, I, I've, I've channeled her myself, and she's very feisty. She's very, like, um, she's a go-getter. Oh, she's the alpha. Oh, she's, yeah. she's totally the alpha. And that's what's so interesting. And, and But you see why she has to be that way. She's funny, too. Girl, girl's got a wicked sense of humor. But she's she, you see why she's had to be that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to read you. So this makes sense, too. I just read this in the Hathor material this morning. And I'm going to read it to you guys again. Because it talks about the idea of sex magic. And it kind of gives you... Oh, girl, I'm sweating balls over here. I tried. I'm trying. Do you know, you know, in the movie Mean Girls, we're like, stop trying to make fetch happen. They say that because she keeps, that's fetch. And they're like, stop trying to make fetch happen. I keep, I hear my voice in my head every day I get up and I put winter clothes on. And I'm like, stop trying to make winter happen. Because <laughs> it's like not going to happen here in Georgia. It's not going to happen. It's very, very unfair because the whole entire month I was in Georgia, it was cold. The day I left, it became hot again. W yep. freaking T F is that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like literally yesterday. I put a big turtleneck on. I, I had the air conditioning running in the fan, <laughs> and I hear that voice going, "Stop trying to make winter happen. It's just not going to happen here. We're in the same zone as Florida. Like Atlanta's in the same zone as Florida. So, but this is interesting, guys. So this is from the Hathors. They say, for instance, you can have an energy movement or relationship between a, the sexual center and the heart." or the power center. If the energy flow or rod that connects the second chakra, the sexual center to the power center is activated, the sex will be expressed as a means to achieve power. However, if you were to express sexuality through your heart, which is the highest frequency range, and the rod becomes the sexual center and the heart would be activated. So they're literally telling you 
in this book hmm. how they do it. Like how the bad guys do it. And they use the chakra, because we have the Manipura, which is right here. That's your third chakra, and Anahata, which is here. So the rod they're talking about is not the male, male genitalia. What they're talking about is the Sushumna, the, the, the rod that goes up the spine, that kind of where all these chakras kind of line up. And so if you only pull it up into the power center, it's activating the need for greed, more power. It's taking the Manipura into the overactive zone. But if you pull it up into the heart, that's when the sex magic becomes for the positive. Yeah. So it was very fascinating. And I really, I think, I think all of our friends watching right now get this by now. Like both, both sides of this war use the same stuff. They do the same things just with different intention. And yeah. the side of light always ask for consent. Yeah. That's the biggest difference between. Um, ritualized sex magic for the for the evil for the good is is the consent um so and do you have anything else we want to look at that before we move into like an overall reading of, of december no let's just go into december i mean i did a live um show a couple of nights ago where we looked into december and it was very very in alignment with tomorrow's astrological reading but we can look further into it with more specific questions rather than a collective reading let's do it what do you want to ask? What do you want? To, can we just get first get to get a general look at what December? Is? Yeah, let's get a general look at December. Um, I'll pull about five cards or so and see what happens. Okay, so we're starting off the month with the Page of Pentacles energy. Um, Page of Pentacles is um, it's kind of like being given. Uh, an offering of some kind or it's like given opportunities um, and, and, and the thing is with the page of Pentacles two pages are childlike energy or young energy um, but it's next to the higher font so I'm kind of getting like now is the opportunity to start tapping into the spiritual aspect of things um because the higher font is about spiritual energy i actually do want to clarify the page of pentacles real quick and get more of an idea of what we're talking about here with page of pentacles um which is with the six of cups to the ten of wands so this is revolving around the family unit um i've kind of explained this to people um and i think tomorrow's kind of touched base on this a few times like we need to stop really putting all of our energy into waking up our family members. It's more like we're planting the seeds within our family. Just um, let Kanye West do it. I know, right? Um, I kind of, I say this analogy during my tarot readings because a lot of people come at me and they're like, well, not come at me, but you know what I mean? Like they, they ask in their readings, why can't I wake my family up? Or, you know, those type of questions. And I look at them and I'm like, your job is not to fully wake somebody up. It's not your job. No, you are God's planters, meaning you plant the seed in the soil. Then you allow God to water the soil. And it's up to that person whether they decide to bloom into a flower or not. Okay. Yeah, that person's awakening also has nothing to do with anybody else but themselves. That's you kind know. of the a water. Why I chose that analogy is because it's not up to, we can put nuggets out there, right? It's kind of like how Kanye put that little nugget out there and people are like, what? That was an acorn. He was like, here's an acorn. <laughs> Actually, like, what do you, do? wait, what? I'm going to go look into this, right? Like spike the person's curiosity on, okay, where's this information coming from? Now, your responsibility as an individual is more or less to work on yourself rather than work on your family. I can't stress that enough to people. Um, because what it, it's just going to cause you a lot of burden, a lot of stress. Um, and that's what the 10 of wands is all about is burden. Um, and again, if you're looking at this card, that's Odin right there, by the way. Odin is kind of like planting all these like little seeds in the ground, the little in their chakras, like, right? Almost some looks like little chakras. How many are there? Are there seven there? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. Yep, there's seven right there. So it's more or less like, to me, it's working on yourself, opening up 
your energies and, and tapping into your own shadow work and stuff like that, rather than focusing and, and putting so much energy into awakening a family. You know, the thing is, it's up to them. And eventually yeah. they're, they're going to have to wake up at some point in time. Now, if we look at this higher font card, let me clarify the higher font card. Because the higher font to me, and this kind of seems like your higher self, like tapping more into your higher self. Well, I, I feel like it has a lot to do with shadow work. Absolutely. We have eight of <coughs> eight of cups. So that's walking away from something. Okay. So kind of like what we've been talking about. This is kind of like the opportunity to walk away from religion, walk away from the narrative, walk away from the lies and the destruction and all that kind of stuff. Like now is the time to pick a side. What side are you going to be on? You're going to be on the negative or you're going to be on the positive? Or are you going to be neutral, which like you said, goes negative anyways. So it's, it's walking away from, I think the religious indoctrination system. Like now is the time to choose your side. I'm going to get one more card on this really quick. Okay. So it's, it's going to cause some friction to cause kind of like that disappointed type of energy where you feel lost you, you, and, and it's very tough to kind of wake up from all of that. Yeah. I mean, depends. I mean, I've, I still go through a little bit of that once in a while. Like, am I on the right path? Like, it's kind of like second guessing yourself. Um, but also too, we have this eight of swords card. I'm not really going to focus too much on that because it's really all about standing your ground. Um, don't allow people to manipulate your decisions. Go within yourself and make your own decisions. I mean, obviously if you need to go to a teacher, I know we've talked about a guru, a teacher and stuff like that. But we also need to tap into our own sovereignty and our own. Um, we have free will. We need to be allowed to make our own decisions based off of our own free will and not someone else's decision. That, there's for a us. huge difference between a teacher and a controller. There's a huge difference between a teacher and a cult leader. Well, the teacher allows you to. If, if you're going to make the wrong decision, the teacher will still allow you to make that decision because that's your karma that you have to face regardless. And the teacher is there to give you words of wisdom and in, in their own knowledge. And then it's up to you to use your free will to make the decision based rather than a priest or a pastor telling you, well, you're condemned to hell if you make this decision and, and or you're kicked out of the church or you're kicked out of the group and, and stuff like that. If you make a certain decision, that's the difference. Absolutely. And it's, um, it's, uh, and she's right because even in the spiritual, I mean, we, you kind of went through that. You, you almost left early from being down here and we pulled on the I Ching and the I Ching was like, you have two choices to make. These are the paths you choose, you know, and, but the I Ching didn't tell you which path to choose. It just said, you choose your choice, right? I left it up to God. I said, if you want me down here, you create a miracle for me. And the miracle happened. So I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> anyways, um, we do have a uh, unnecessary unwanted anxiety coming through this month. So it does look like things might start to heat up a little bit. Um, I feel like a lot of old belief systems will start to crumble with the five of swords. But yeah, this is like feeling a lot of unnecessary anxiety. We do, however, have the justice card. So that tells me justice will be served. Things are coming around and it's connected with the emperor card. So to okay. me, that's kind of like taking back the power because the emperor card is about power. And I said on my live show the other day, what was coming up in the cards is I said to people, it's time to put your warrior pants on and stop waiting for someone to save you and do something. Yeah. Well, that's going to actually was going to lead me to one of the last questions I was going to ask you today, Stephanie. So okay. on it, well, I know we're a little over an hour now. So the other day uh, when I was doing my readings, which I haven't aired on my channel yet, wow. It's already scheduled. I had an epiphany about the whole sit back, relax, and watch the movie. 
I have to figure out a way to say this. So we know that both the the dark side and the, the light side have to um, play by the laws of consent to a, an extent. And the darkness will manipulate that consent. They'll find loopholes in it. And they feel like if they tell you what they're going to do and you agree to it, then they will not be responsible for the karma. So how have they been doing that all this time? Through Hollywood, through movies. We go when we watch a movie and we buy the ticket and we watch the Academy Awards and we eat the popcorn. So we're giving our consent. Not one person is saying, standing up going, wait a minute, this is fucked up. No, because we think it's entertainment in our minds. But so when we hear the whole truth or community saying, sit back and watch the movie. Is this playing on the fact that the dark hat, the bad guys have used movies as a way to get our consent? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, just sit back watch a movie don't do your work don't worry about it you don't need to you could just sit back and relax in that comfortable seat eat your popcorn and just let because by watching the movies we let the nwo walk right in the front door does that make sense what i'm saying like they're directly so when people tell you to sit back and watch a movie they're directly telling you oh, yeah they're part of the cabal don't the two cards came out again, the Justice and the Emperor card, except they came out in the reverse, meaning uh, instead of the Emperor and then the Justice card, it came out the Justice and then the Emperor. So it's 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 justifying their power. Yeah, does that make sense? Like and they're, probably, they're working for you guys and working I, through your subconscious with the moon card. Because y'all, y'all, y'all. Stephanie knows this, I know for a fact, and I can't say who, but I know, I know that there are big truthers out there that are part and paid by the three-letter agency. Who pays for, what agency pays for Hollywood, too? The three-letter fucking agency. Y'all know what I'm talking about. By the way, I got more cards on this. Go ahead. Them working together to bring in their own agenda, their own world, their own path, their own trajectory. So um, that's victory for the bad guys. And this is a full card. So putting us on a different path. Exactly. What this is, yes. Through the subconscious mind of giving over consent. I just had um, a download. I was just told this just now. People need to remove permissions of the NWO. Yeah, I do that every night. I just revoke yeah, I'm, I'm telling the whole audience they need to remove permissions. We were, we, oh. you know, we've gone through this whole removing permissions, but I think it's time for yeah. people who are viewing us to also take the power into their own hands and remove permissions of anything that has gone into your subconscious mind where you nonchalantly gave over your permission and your power. And let's let, okay, let's explain this too, because yes. And thank you to Jesse Zaboder, because she's the one that taught us how to do this. Yeah, you, so um, what we see on the, on the side of, of light is our shadow work, our wounds, our things that need to be healed and worked through. What the darkness will do is they will manipulate those wounds and they see those wounds as a loophole. So this is what I do almost every night before I go, go to sleep. I say out loud, I do not, you do not have permission. And I actually say the names of the people that I know personally who were in the cabal, who were on YouTube, that I have factual evidence of them being, who have messed with me and tried to take me down. LOL, it didn't work. <laughs> Cause I got Magdalene as a protector. But um, um, I say their names out loud or I say the person known as this person because i now know that's not their real name some of these truther guys that you love and adore that's not even their real name it's not even their real name all right that's all i can say about that and i say the name i know the person that goes by this name you have do not have my permission to be in my home energetically in my system in my computers and i revoke i use that word i revoke any permission that you think you have through any of my wounds, 
you are not to use any of my wounds, the wounds that are known to me or unknown to me. And I say it very clearly, and Jesse told us to say this, and you have this authority. If you do not, if you break my, my rules over my house and my space and my life, I will have you sent to the throne room of God for judgment because consent is a big one. It talks about the throne room of God too in the Egyptian book of the dead. And ever since I started doing that, I mean, I know they're trying things. I mean, we've talked stuff and I was, I know, I, I think I'm feeling some stuff they're trying, but they haven't. I mean, mm -hmm. Stephanie, like I, the whole year I would wake up with bruises all over me and scratches and I can't mm -hmm. even get in. I mean, Stephanie knows everything that's happened. There's stuff I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to talk about on a show because it's just so horrific what happened to me um, physically, not to mention emotionally, I mentioned, but physically what happened to me. I think yeah. people would be horrified if they actually know, knew what this person they love and adore actually did to me. I mean, physically, not just. It's, it's really bad. It's really bad. Yeah. It's really bad. I, it's amazing. It is amazing that I am still alive, to be honest with you guys. And I know there are multiple death spells that have been put on me. I am aware of that. Stephanie and I both know that. We know that there's a contract out on me. I'm totally aware of that. I get it. I know it, which has just fueled me even more. Like, what do I have to lose at this point? You've already put a contract out on me. I'm going to keep fucking going. Um, it's really bad what has been done to me, but I'm still alive. And God told me that about a year ago when this all started. Or when I realized what was happening, it had been going on for a while, but I had no idea. I had no idea until about a year ago. And um, I was, uh, I learned, I know a lot about vampires now because I was waking up with blood in my mouth and I know they bite from the inner, the inner lip. And so one morning I was, uh, this about a year ago, I was in my bathroom at like four o'clock in the morning, under a hundred pounds, blood coming out of my mouth. I didn't have the energy to go on full of scratch marks, broods. And I, I just said, why, like, why God? Like, make this stop. And God said, you're strong enough to handle this. This needs to be exposed and I'm not going to let you die. And when God tells you he's not gonna let you die, no matter what they do to you, you're not going to die. And so I know that they're frustrated. I know that because they can't kill me. You can take my money. You can do the horrific things that you've done to me, which guess what? The military does know I have filled out four affidavits and there's an FBI file. So sucks to be you um all the lies you've told are going to start coming out because when the thing about the truth is when you when you speak the truth you don't have to remember anything yeah when you lie you've got to continue to keep up with the lie you got to continue your the same story and be consistent with it and so when you have inconsistencies and um you know reasons there YouTube was removed off of YouTube, you know, like in, in, in all these other inconsistencies and stuff like that. It makes you go, hmm, interesting, you know, um, and you've had the same story the whole entire time, you know, and, 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 you're, out help, and you're helping people too. You know, you didn't have to do the 30 day challenge. I think it was divinely inspired. Um, but you did it out of the kindness of your heart. And this is this is knowledge that people pay you for. And and you volunteer to, you know, do the challenge and, and everything like that. I'm not even going to take credit for the challenges. Oh, no, you, of, got, you, you guys are on board with me, too. I mean, all of the you're the one that spent hours up at night creating the different workouts or, or picking the different workouts and everything like that. It was like a that. pleasure. It was a pleasure. I, I said, I, it was truly a pleasure to do it, but yeah. And I know people are seeing the truth and I'm grateful for that. And, um, I know stuff. And those who are not, that's on them and, um, can't control what other people do and how they see and how they think. Um, but what, what I'm getting in the cards is like now, now is time to decide you know, I'm not saying whether you choose Bryce's side or someone else's side, but what side are you standing on? Um, well, it's just are darkness you going, or light. You know, it's the darkness or it's the light. And I got to really start using your discernment and, and your better judgment on which way you're going. That makes sense. And the reason why I'm being targeted is multiple reasons. One is because of who I am. I am Merovingian. 
I am the Magdalene bloodline that has come out on the back channel. The military have <laughs> talked about that. So I am now feel free to say it. And also because, and I think it's karmically connected because I am going through the missing books of the Bible and I am exposing this. And the church is the biggest hold that they have on people that the cabal has on people is the church. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's why they're attacking. And that's okay. They can keep it. I mean, literally, I, I mean, maybe one day I will be able to say the extent of what's happened to me physically, but it's, it's pretty incredible that I'm still alive. Isn't it, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. And that's because of God. I mean, you're not one to be able to afford to, to lose weight. Number one, you know, and um, I'm not going to go into specifics, but yeah, what's been done to you is pretty disturbing. I mean, that's, that's an understatement. Disturbing I, I is not. And I'm so appreciative to you, Stephanie, because you very, very willingly, when I, when I was filling out my affidavits for the military, I had to have a witness. And there's two people I have that witnessed everything. One is you and one is another person. I won't say who that person is, but um, you are very willing. You're like, absolutely. I will be your witness. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means Stephanie's not protected too. So I'm just going to remind everybody watching that when you become a federal witness, you can't threaten a federal witness. That's federal crime. So Stephanie is protected too. Um, people who are that that deep, deep in crappy karma are not going to be able to go forward. Yeah, and we know we know you're trying to trade out your karma with other people right now. We we I know so much more about what's going on, but I do also you know I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but I do know for the the good truthers that have been sucked in. And are now being handled by these people and are forced to do things they don't want to do. I know you can't contact me. A lot of you can't because you're being watched and being tracked. But you can go to the authorities. And I promise you, if you go to the authorities, you can find Kim on Signal or Telegram. You can find... They understand. And if you're willing to testify and go to the authorities, you will get amnesty. Because I understand. I understand that there are many truthers out there that have done hurtful things because they had to to protect themselves because of their because they got themselves in a situation that they didn't realize they were getting themselves into. I get that. I've been told all of this. And I, I have... Forgiveness has been hard for me. I, I struggled this morning in my practice with, I wanted to cry because of betrayal, but I understand. And I promise you that they do, the authorities that we're talking about in this situation do as well. And amnesty is available if you turn your, if you turn it in, just turn yourself in. You'll be protected. This is a very serious war, isn't it? Yeah, this isn't about being entertained by a bunch of truthers. This isn't about intel. This is a lot deeper. And um, we all have a role, whether you're on a YouTube screen or not, we all have a role in this. And that's what I'm talking about. It's like put on your warrior pants. We all have a role. And even if that just means you're doing your shadow work, you yeah. have a role right in this here now moment. And sitting around doing nothing, then I was not the time. No. Listen, my, I, you probably will agree with me, Stephanie. My shadow work I do every day is way harder than the YouTube videos I put up. It's way harder. So if that's what you're doing right now is just doing your shadow work, you're doing a lot. Doing a hell of a lot. And I want to give those people, by the way, credit. Yes. That they're doing something. Hard. Yeah. And it is very, very hard. I mean... I've gone through numerous dark nights of the soul in my life, not even realizing that's what it was. But this time around was a doozy and it was the biggest eye opener for me. And it was the hardest. I'm still going through it. And, you know, for one, I, you have a Scorpio moon, I have a Virgo moon. So I tend to be a little bit more relaxed about things oftentimes and just kind of go with the flow and just whenever, and, you know, um, and I, I, I don't cry. really, I don't cry as much as I probably should, but I'll say this in the last month, I've cried more than I have in probably 10 years. That's so good though. Cause you're releasing. And I've kept it in. Well, I, I had to release it. It's, it's been kept in 
because I force myself never to cry because God forbid I make myself vulnerable to myself, which how that works. Um, that's my that's worst sense of thinking. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, you know, it's, um, I feel like if I cry, I'm going to be, yeah, like weak or vulnerable and stuff like that. But actually in the fact you're strong when you cry, that we shows for help. And it's yeah. that, cause now you're in kind of this some um, leadership position and I've, I've told you, and you can probably understand this now, the hardest part about being in a leadership position is having tough love with people. That's the hardest. Yeah. I've had a lot of people, I've had to really, really put my foot down in some um, parts of this journey. And I've had people walk away from me because of that. And I mean, that's on them. Um, people who I really thought were close to me. And, um, that was actually another hard part of things is that actually recently happened to me with a few people. So people, I would call up on the phone if I was in a situation that I could talk to them, you know, and I, I've come to realize in this journey, you're going to lose a lot of people. You just will. I mean, look at DJT. Yeah. How many people has he lost throughout this journey? I mean, I can't even imagine all of the bullshit and nonsense he, he has gone through. Yeah. And I kind of look at it that way when I kind of have my own little pity party, like, why me, God? Why am I losing all these people? And the fact of the matter is, if you're losing somebody in your life, well, that person didn't deserve you in the first place. You know, it's you're rising up above it all. You are raising your frequency. If you're raising your frequency, those that cannot go with you will vibe away from you. Yeah. So it's part of the law of attraction. You know, it's um, there's a blessing in it. Is it hard? Oh, absolutely. And these are people I still adore and love to this day. And, and that includes even my own family, who I haven't spoken to in two, two and a half years, haven't seen them in three years at this point because of, you know, the the, the sickness going around. But, yeah. and it can be a very lonely thing to go through. I'm not going to say that it's easy because it's not. It's, it's, it's very lonely at times. But, but my small little circle I have now are the closest people I have to me and I ever have had in my life. That's I all you need, you. right? That, that, that's all you need. You need a few people in your life that you can be absolutely vulnerable with and be yourself with. And, yeah. and then you're good. And, and yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen, this shit, we've been through this year together. I'm not going anywhere. Cause we literally, it's like, and I know there's a bunch of people that, you know, I've done readings for people who literally have nobody, like nobody. I'll, I'll say this, Bryce and I are there for you and spirit, you know, we're rooting we're for you signal group. I love our signal group. Even if you didn't do the 30 day challenge, hop on in. It's not going anywhere. It's a, it's so, I mean, I don't, you, we don't even get to get on the group that often because we're doing all the videos and stuff and editing, but I, I'll wake up and I'll be like 170 notifications and I'm like, holy shit. Like, and I'll go through what yeah. I'll read. I'll just skim through the comments and I'm like, oh my God, these beautiful human beings all over the world are becoming each other's family. And really the conversations that are happening there are so vulnerable and beautiful. It's worldwide. Worldwide. And that's why I made it private is because I, so, you know, you have to, you have to actually get the link. It's on my community tab to follow it in. Um, Can you we, send me that from my channel? Yes, we will. We will. Um, oh, wait a second. I'm in there. I could just. Yeah. You. I was like, wait, you do have the link. Uh, yeah, because you're a moderator. And, and you know, we have three of our three of our our um, our viewers are also moderating for us because those of us on the chat, we, we literally can't be on there all the time. And I and I was really nervous when I first created this. I was like, oh, my God, are these fucking witch black witch coven trolls going to get in there and start bullying people but no we haven't seen any of that and i'm so grateful to our moderators who are in there and are monitoring that and if, if there is one abusive comment that person's out you know and we have not seen that everybody's just so supportive and giving everybody built each other up it's amazing giving great advice. Um, I will. So one of my awesome students who is in my yoga course right now, I meant to do this in the beginning, but I'll do this. I'll show the website. I'll put the link and I'll show the website another day. She found she's over in Europe and she found um, a Ayurvedic doctor who will do online consultations with you. 
and she went to him for her dosha stuff. So I'm going to put, I will have to put a link in the description box and I'll show you guys the website in the next video we film. But thank you to her. I won't say her name on screen because I don't know if she wants to keep her privacy, but thank you so much. Um, I mean, that's just what I'm talking about. Like all these people, she also did the 30 day challenge. She's one of your tarot card clients. She's in my yoga course. Everybody's like saying, hey, this is what I found. And they're putting up websites they're finding and they're all helping each other. And that is what Ram Das meant. It's He's a walking. family. It's We're a community. Walking. We are walk, literally walking. We have two places we can walk to. We can either walk towards the direction of the controllers or we can walk home. We're walking I'm home. I'm walking home. I don't know about you guys, but I'm walking home. Going right into that light. I'm so, done with this shit. Me <laughs> too. All right, you guys. Well, we, we both love you very, very much very much um please leave us any comments down in the description or comment section below about atlantis this this december if you picked up on something any 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 questions you have going forward for us to keep doing these shows that you want us to look into obviously we're not going to be tapping into individual people because that's a bad thing we don't want to read on people and no you cannot ask that person's higher self their higher self is not their lower self their lower self is the one that's here experiencing the karma so their lower self is the one that gets the permission for the consent or not so I saw someone try to sneak that by. I'll just ask that person's higher self. No, 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 no. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be just pulling on general information. Or, or if you have a question specifically for yourself, ask those down in the comment section below, guys. And thank you so much to everybody who is sharing our videos out there because we are shadow banned. So I really appreciate that, you guys. Thank you so, so, so much. You guys are all rock stars. We're working very hard on getting that 60-day challenge up and running. There's going to be a fast in the middle of it optional optional fast with shanti so anyway what sorry yep. i just want to put this out there okay um number one i'm going to be doing a live show probably after this airs but okay. you can people that didn't view it can go back and, and and watch it um i am marking my jewelry down 15 percent for christmas so if you would like to purchase an item for the holiday for a loved one or for yourself you can go and watch that video it's it's all based off of the number that is assigned to the piece of jewelry and then you just email my jewelry uh email which will be in the description box in my live show if what you have not you doing your live show. what time are you doing it's your live? 3 30 on a on tuesday afternoon so i'm actually going here live in about so, two hours. Okay, so, and this is, we're filling this on Tuesday. It depends on how long it takes me to edit this, guys, before it gets up. So if you do the live, tell you what, I will intentionally put this up after you do your live so I can put it in the description box below, a link to okay. it, which is done. So people, it's easy access for people because Stephanie's got incredible jewelry, guys. Um, so yes, go look that. It's, it's all, like we're, we, su we support small businesses here. So, right, so it's all small business. So, um, yeah. And the jewelry purchases go to helping me purchase Christmas gifts for my child. <laughs> so that's what it, that's where it's going to. So I just want to put that out there. It's not going to anything stupid or anything like that. So it's how it, it's, it's helping, you know, marking down all my jewelry, which is then in turn is helping me. So okay. anyways, all that exchange of energy and everything like that. So that's amazing. All right, you guys. Well, yeah, let us know. Also, in the new year, if you have any show ideas you want for us, I've got a whole list of show ideas that I thought of myself, but let us know because I think we work well together. I research. She pulls the cards. It's good. And now that I'm back home, I can go on a regular schedule again with our shows because it's been it's been a while. I know. Kind of we, I, you know, as I said, like I know what Stephanie's going through, so I kind of let her kind of have her... <laughs> Yeah, I was like, hey, let's do a show today. <laughs> I had like readings for the first time in like three weeks. Today. I was like, sure, let's do it. Because when you were here, you were going through hell and back. So, you know. I mean, I'm still kind of going through it. I'm just handling it a little bit better right now because I am I feel like I'm at the tail end of this bout of this Dark Knight of the Soul. It'll, this, come, this, it'll keep coming this around. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it will come back to bite me in the ass at some point. Or <laughs> same, same. So, all right, you guys, well, we love you and we will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.